All right. Uh, so thanks everyone for switching and uh, for uh, doing the chapters out of order. I wanted to do this chapter and then we're out of town. Um, so thanks for doing that. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so my presentation isn't super long today, um, but uh, I hope to kind of, um, I'm using, so uh, let me just go to my, uh, oh, not that. Okay. Um, so basically uh, I just have a notebook here and um, uh, I'm, my aim today is to demonstrate this chapter, like the workflows chapter, um, using uh, the targets package as an explanatory tool. So basically to represent the steps and uh, kind of the objects that come together in uh, this workflow that the authors kind of lay out in this chapter. So if you look at the end, we have, you know, just basic steps of like reading in the data, do, uh, doing a, uh, setting up a split um, uh, with the stratifying by sale price, doing training and testing, um, setting up a recipe with some data kind of uh, uh, cleaning and manipulation steps, creating a model uh, in mine, I've created a few to demonstrate this uh, concept of a workflow set. Um, and then create a workflow or workflows plural, plural in the case of the what I've done and then fit and uh, I've also done the prediction and evaluation step as well. Um, so before I start, all right, let's see how do I wanna do this. Um, there, I'll start here. All right, so I have this disclaimer here, uh, just a lot like the disclaimer in the uh, chapter nine uh, kind of, uh, uh, book down book uh, for the chapter that Luke did. Um, the, uh, th there's probably some things you would want to do differently if you're really doing this as like a modeling project, what I've done here. So you would probably want to uh, tune your models that I've included, you know, using cross validation on the training set. Uh, and you'd also want to probably use different recipes for the different model types in the workflow set uh, function. Um, but having said that, um, uh, Basically at a high level, what, what we have in a workflow object is pre-processing, which is generally a recipe, some kind of model, uh, and then post-processing. This isn't always applicable, but they talk about, you know, you might want to do some kind of, uh, you know, transformation of the predictions after, or, uh, you know, classifying based on, you know, if you're outputting probabilities from your model, you might want to set a different uh, certain thresholds for those probabilities and convert it into kind of a categorical prediction, stuff like that. Um, so in the process today, I'll be fitting uh, uh, these three f models. So like the linear model just says uh, they did, you know, regression models they did in the chapter. A random forest model and an XG boost uh, model. Again, I haven't tuned these, they're just the default. So not best, best practices there, but just for demonstration purposes. Um, so before I go into the actual pipeline, I just wanted to go over, um, so I'm using this targets package and uh, are you all familiar with that? I think I mentioned it at one point, uh, something I was excited about, but have you all used it? I have not used it. Okay. So, uh, you could you can see my R Studio now, right? Yeah. All right. So basically, what uh, what Targets does is it creates a kind of a pipeline of steps. Um, each step, uh, it's it's the folder is structured a lot like um, a lot like an R package. So you have uh, you know an R folder with a bunch of uh, functions that you're using. Um, and then a main targets file. So it's underscore targets that R and that kind of defines the uh, main steps of your process. Um, so you define kind of what, what packages you want to use. You read in your function files, um, maybe set some other options, and then you bring them all together and, and kind of uh, uh, define how, how each step leads to another step. Um, and so in this case, I just have this one file here uh, that makes an AIMS recipe. Uh, makes workflow sets and uh, fits models. And then everything else I'm just doing in line in this targets file. Um, so before I get into that, I think it'll make more sense if I show the, the this, uh, this diagram view. So basically if you, if you look at each of those steps, um, sorry, uh, seems like there's some 
there we go. All right. Um, if you look at each of those steps uh, in this targets file um, right here, uh, you can represent that in a diagram. Um, so based on what depends on what, you can, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Um, so you can look at kind of uh, the different the flow of this project. Um, so let me just move things a little bit here so you can all see uh, a little bit better. This is um, part of the targets package? Yes, yes, this is the targets oh, package. that's cool. So basically um, I have the Ames raw data, right? So you're reading in that data is the first step. Um, and I've also defined these model objects. So XG boost, a random forest and linear model. I also have a custom uh, metrics object that they use in the book just to uh, generate a few different metrics in addition to um, uh, like root mean squared error, uh, mean absolute error and uh, R squared, I believe. Um, and then you kind of bring it through a series of steps. And so this diagram represents that. So, um, so after you, you know, after I uh, have brought in the data, I'm doing a cleaning step, which is the same cleaning step that they're doing in the book, which is just a log transformation um, of, of uh, the sales price. Um, sales, yeah, I think it's sales price. And then using that clean data, you split it into training and test. So you create that split object, split it into train right here and test over here. And then with that training data, right, you're, um, you're using that um, to, uh, you know, you feed that into your recipe. And then with that recipe and your model objects, you define a workflow. Um, and then once, once you um, have that workflow, you can fit that workflow using the training data and you have your fitted models. And then you can make predictions using the features in the test set. So that's what this represent represents here. And then you can combine them and look at kind of how uh, accurate your predictions were by looking at the true outcomes with the uh, predictions. And then at the end, I'm evaluating it and then creating an R markdown with a lot of this information incorporated. Um, so at a high level, that's what I'm doing. And I think uh, the main thing I wanted to demonstrate here in addition to the overarching process is that you know, this workflow object is just in, in this case, combination of the models and the recipe I'm using. Um, all right, any questions so far? Uh, I'll go into the individual steps. But... Okay. All right, so then basically this report is what I'm generating at the end. Um, so this is that same pipeline. It's a little hard to see in here. So I just showed it in a different graph. Hello, I have a visitor. Okay, you can. I'll leave the house in a minute. Okay, sounds good. I'll see you later. All right, um, and then so you can look at those steps individually. So I have this Ames raw step. These are all the things you saw in the diagram. A cleaning step, a split step, and and the nice thing about targets, one of the, one of the nice things is that it produces you know time for each of these steps. So you can see that the report you know took the longest uh, twenty two seconds to make, and then there's all these other steps. I think these are just so quick that it doesn't really register. Um, and so I just have, you know, uh, uh, this target, this, sorry, this, this markdown file is kind of feeding in all these different objects that we created in this pipeline and using them to make a, this a summary report presentation. So you have, uh, the raw data, I've just represented, you know, the, the skim R output. So the, uh, the, um, uh, the kind of descriptive statistics and the distribution of each of these. Um, main thing to notice here, and you'll see later a little bit later, is that the sales price is uh, skewed um, and uh, uh, right, right skewed, I believe is the right way to describe it. I always get confused. Uh, but um, uh, so, so you're going to, this is our outcome that we're going to be using. And um, uh, in the linear model, you, you'd you want to, uh, you know, this to be normally distributed. So anyway, that that's uh, kind of preempting the uh, the log transformation. which is also included some other descriptives here. So this correlation matrix using this uh, core package. Um, so I'm just reading in that raw data object, um, doing a R plot for uh, the, the, the correlations here. I'm not gonna go in too far into that. And then here you can start to see um, the, uh, you know, this pairs plot. So with the sales price, this is a little, you can see even better here that it's a little bit skewed. Um, 
And so I have it again after I've cleaned it. Uh, reading in that clean step, you can see it looks a little bit better, a little bit more normally distributed. Okay. All right, and then reading in the object for the step for the predict, combining the predictions with the actual observations. Uh, here are the three models. So this linear model, random forest, and XG boost. You can see, uh, you can start to see here that uh, the lower end of the um, sales price uh, levels here, we're kind of um, uh, overestimating the sales price, and then a little bit of an underestimate for all the models towards the end. Um, so if you were to, uh, you know, I I would probably, if you, this is a real project, I'd probably be, uh, I would, would be kind of doing some cross-validation on, on the train set, looking at some of these, uh, you know, uh, diagnostics and trying to make better models before I would uh, choose a final model, but here we are just doing this, uh, this just uh, this kind of narrow purpose. And then here you can see it a little bit better. So if you're looking at the residuals, so like the difference between the, the predicted value and the actual sale price, you can see that over here, right, where we have some uh, over predictions and over on the end of here, you know, so, uh, under, under predictions and kind of in the middle, it's more randomly distributed, which is a little bit better. Okay, and then I've uh, evaluated them uh, using the mean absolute error, root mean squared error, and R squared on the test set. Um, and so you have the three models and the mean absolute error, root mean squared error, and uh, R squared. And you can kind of see how they compare. It looks like in this case with no tuning, uh, this random forest model does the best um, by slightly. And then I just have my session information in here. Um, so, so yeah, and that's all kind of generated using this. And then this report um, just basically references the objects that I want to use and uh, makes this summary. Um, I can go into more details of the uh, kind of the other points in the chapter, uh, um, or at least let me actually, let me do one more thing and then whoever wants to ask questions or whatever, I can open that up. Um, Okay, um, so here I'm, I thought this is pretty neat, this part of the chapter. Um, so this one function I'm using, I made my own function here just to wrap uh, this function here, but um, workflow set. So basically if you have, have a recipe or a list of recipes and you have a bunch of models, you can just kind of define those all at once in this workflow set. So you define different workflows in basically one line of code, which is pretty neat. Um, so here I'm the model list I'm using um, is this, uh, um, is this here, right? So it's the XG boost model, linear model, and the random forest model. And then you can see those defined right here. So the linear regression model uh, with the LM engine, and then these two set with uh, regression as the mode and ranger and XG boost is the engine. Um, and yeah, uh, and one, so, I just, I want to convince everyone to use targets. So I'm going to show you all a couple of things that I think are pretty cool. Um, are those, um, those inputs to tar or target, the first one, is that just like a unquoted name? So it's actually assigning yeah. the stuff on the right to that variable? Yeah, so, so it's a, yeah, okay. exactly. So you can think of it as a variable. Um, basically it, it makes it into a target uh, object and, that object you won't see in your immediate environment, but if you go to um, the folder, you have this targets folder and you can see all the objects here. So basically every step here that I've made, uh, it, are, it just may, puts it into this folder. So, you, so that, so when you, so if I wanted to read, so I do tar read here, if I wanted to read Ames raw, which is the name. So any of these steps I can just tar read and name it, and then you can get the actual data here. Um, so for any of these steps, you can recover the object. So if I wanted to say uh, model names, which is just kind of silly, but I'm using it for a few things. I just have the LM model, RF model, XG boost model. Um, and then if I wanted to read the actual objects, um, the model, oops, uh, the model objects, oops, uh, models, then these are just the actual model objects in there. Um, and oh, yeah, sure. Um, and then 
yeah, just uh, so once I have those, you know, the, the those workflow sets and the fit and models, I'm uh, basically using uh, per to take all those fitted models, make a prediction on the Ames uh, test set, um, and then uh, binding those predictions together, and then doing some more per stuff over here, um, mapping, uh, you know, uh, this Ames evaluation function. Um, for each of those predictions for each of the models um, and outputting it to a single uh, evaluated data frame here, which you have the model, the metric, and the estimate for each of those models. Um, this, is, this is really cool. The, um, when, when you're writing it, so when you were first doing it, were you writing inside tar target functions or were you, did you have a kind of separate R script? I'm thinking about kind of getting errors and there's things like that. Yeah. I need to run the whole thing. Yeah. So uh, I just kind of built it up as I went. So uh, mm -hmm. like I would do one of these steps. And sometimes I, when I do these, pro when I've done these projects in the last couple of months since I started using this, um, I have like an experimental file where I'm just like trying a couple of things and playing with some of the objects that it's creating. Um, so like if I just, if I just had this one, uh, if I just had this, let's say like when I start, right, you just start maybe with this one step here, Ames raw, and you're just like, all right, have I read in the data correctly? And then I'm gonna go do this and Ames raw, try to check it. And then, um, you know, maybe just run the next step in line and, and try to see if it works. Um, uh, yeah, so, so, but I've started just to put an experimental file at the top so I can like play with these objects before actually making them into Kind of functions um but uh but yeah um and then yeah that makes sense thanks a lot of I'm this i just running the report sorry go ahead yeah so you have a list of all these tar objects mm -hmm. how does it run in the report yeah good question so this last uh step here is tar oh. render um so it so you i've put a so you have to put a uh report or rmd file at the top level of this targets directory um and then uh, this tar render is kind of like a targets package, like wrapper for rendering a markdown. Um, and it's really kind of neat because uh, so you can define, so like you write it out like normal markdown um, and then you do like tar target stuff in here. So here I've just, this is where I'm like tar glimpse gives you the, the diagram. Um, so I'm just running that there. Mm -hmm. Tar meta gives you uh, that information. I can do it here too. Um, of all the steps and like the different, uh, you know, the hash for the, the unique ID for the data. And then like the seconds I'm using here. And I, if there are any warnings and errors, it, produce, it, put, it puts it in here. So you can just like look for them. Um, but, but basically you reference all this stuff. Um, and so whatever you reference, like whatever target objects you reference, if you update them, update them, it knows that you've updated them and it'll re-render the report. Um, so is when you, make report.rmd is it mm -hmm. blank or like you have to already fill in all of these chunks? yeah so so i just did it at the end uh so like i was like all right i've made this pipeline with these different objects like what out of these objects here do i want to include in the report um and then so i i was like all right i want to give a high level view of the pipe so i like wrote it at the end um uh yeah and just just filled this in like you were doing like yeah, like you were, you would just write code normally, um, and and yeah, so I start to like play around and see like what like what are each of these objects, right? So like if like this here uh, is just the raw data, and I just want to do choose the ones that we're using the the, the predictors and the outcome that we're using to the model, and make a GG Paris, uh, but I don't have any of the libraries lo loaded right now, um, so I won't do it, but. Um, Oops, uh, no, that's not the right. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, so I started like to fool around with it and see like, what do I want to, um, what do I want to include? Um, and, and yeah, so, it, but it behaves just like a normal uh, markdown file. It's just that these references here to tar objects are special because targets will recognize when they're updated and what the dependencies are. Oh, um, so the only, so like the, the reason why you include that last step in your list to render RMD, yeah, the report uh, tar render is to kind of link the 
targets file with the report so that when you make updates, then there it like updates it, right? Exactly. It doesn't exactly. actually do anything aside from that. Exactly. It doesn't make so, an auto generate a report for you with all of these things. Right, right. Yeah. You have okay. to like figure out what components you want. And so like if I were just exactly. do this for a second, um, I'll make a target called my name and just say Kevin. And then let's say we want to actually add it in here. I, uh, 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 I think this should work. Uh, what did I call it? My name. Um, let's see, I think I need to put an R in front of this. Um, so yes, yeah, so then if I do this and I uh, tar make is what you used to actually run it. And um, here it's just like, it'll check each of the steps. So now it's just rerunning the report. Uh, mm. Oh, my name not found. Uh, oh, cause I didn't save this file. Okay, let me do it again. Okay. So now it's rerunning the report. And then in a second, I'll just look here and then we'll have the David. Um, yeah, um, to add to Kevin's point, so one of the best part of target is that, uh, you know, other steps are not run, like only the step that has been changed is basically run. So it really saves you on uh, the computation mm -hmm. and processing time. That's awesome. So here, yeah. so now it just has, my name is Kevin. Oh, I added an extra thing in there, but, yeah. but so it just has added that and everything else. Um, Nothing else actually ran. It just referenced the the objects that have been saved in this targets directory. Um, so let me just just for fun, I'll I'll destroy. So if you do tar destroy, it deletes all those objects. So now that targets folder isn't there anymore. And I'll do make or actually let me do this. So there's a need, there's also a need. Um, uh, uh, you can they have a pre built shiny dashboard where you can actually look at your pipeline. Um, and uh, uh, it looks funny. Um, I think so I have that one. I didn't mean for this to be like an advertisement for this package, but I just love it. And uh, um, let me just get rid of that. Um, Um, so it's kind of funny. Okay, whatever. But um, that's not going to help us very much in this case. Um, anyway, this is a if you're if you're if I don't know why before it wasn't looking like this. But anyway, it shows you a representation of your pipeline, and then it'll update. And as you're running it, you can see what's been run and kind of what's out of date and stuff like that. Um, but let me just quickly, I'll show you. Uh, so I've destroyed everything. So now if I run it again, I'll run it in this make cluster MQ, which actually will, in this case, I've set it up so it utilizes like multi-core on, on my computer. So it knows based on what's in this pipeline, uh, what can be run independently and what's dependent on what, and it'll automatically like do it in a distributed way. Um, so I just do this and it'll rerun everything because I've destroyed the whole directory. Um, but yeah, I just think like in the topic of workflows, uh, this is really in this chapter is like about the workflow object, but um, I think it, uh, it has really helped with my the organization, a lot of my projects. Um, and I think it can be used like this uh, kind of together with tidy models in a productive way. Um, so right now it's still, so the, it's probably just finishing this report because it takes a little bit. And there it is. Okay. So now it's recreated this targets directory. All that stuff is back. Um, these objects. And yeah. Yeah, this is super cool. I have like a really gnarly modeling process with a lot of moving parts that has been giving me a headache for many months. And I say this and I'm like, oh, this is the solution that I didn't even know existed that I need. So yeah. thank you for putting this together. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, so the 
it's, it proceeds or uh, kind of takes over for this package called Drake that I don't know if you all have used it. I never used it uh, before and I saw targets come out and I was like, oh, this sounds really interesting. Kind of the similar reaction. I was like, I didn't know I knew this, um, but I clearly do. And like, I think what I was doing before a lot is I would make a markdown like this and stuff a bunch of stuff in it and it would get really messy and really hard to like move, go through. And I like this because you can just like say, what for my workflow, do I want to include and then just reference that object and then make a really kind of clean looking report that doesn't have a ton of code in it. Um, you said this fire. precedes Drake? Or uh, uh, not precedes, uh, uh, t it is taken over for Drake. It's it's the yes. same person uh, oh. taken over for Drake. I, I uh, sometimes have trouble uh, with words, but- um, I try, yeah, I try, to, I try to learn Drake like, a year ago and I got so confused. I did not find it intuitive at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never, I don't know how to use Drake at all, but uh, yeah, sorry, I interrupted someone. Yeah, I think the Drake and Tagged uh, from the, the same author, right? Um, Tagged is the like um, higher version of Drake. I'm not sure if they are coming from the same author, right? Sorry, I missed that, uh, what you said. It's kind of hard, you're kind of off. I mean, it's hard to... The two packages, um, Target and Drake, I think they are from the same author. Um, yes. Target yeah, is right. somehow up, um, upgrade from the Drake. Uh, Target from the Drake. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this is the the user manual for for Targets, and it's Will Lando is the guy, the author, and he um, I think he was the yeah he was the Drake uh, author, and so he's like, at the end he's like. What about Drake? Why is Drake superseded is the right word. Yeah, superseded. Um, so so there's like a lot of similarities apparently. I, I've never used any of these, but um, um, but yeah. Um, and so another nice thing that I, I would want to do, maybe if I present again on when we, cause I, there's more stuff that I think they're gonna do with workflow sets. Um, so one thing you can do in targets, which is kind of neat, is like there's repeated steps in this in this uh, workflow. So there's like, uh, for instance, making a making a model here, or um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, maybe that's the only thing. If I had multiple recipes, there would be like a few different recipes. So one thing you can do is actually like kind of like per you can actually map a pipeline, and so you can create have a pipeline kind of template and then create a bunch of uh, instantiations of that pipeline for different uh, parameters. So like you can make the same pipeline, but then say, oh, I want to uh, make this the model um, and just and define it in like a table and then just like run the pipeline for every row of that table, um, which is pretty neat. I've done a little bit of that at work and um, it's it's been really helpful. Um, so. Um, but yeah, but if you, da so I have this in my own repository right now, I did a pull request. Uh, I don't know exactly how I'm, how it's gonna fit into the, all the stuff in the repo right now on uh, the website, the GitHub for this book club or kind of the book down. So, um, uh, but, but if you download it or clone it, once it's up there, you can just rerun everything. And I think I have the targets in there even, so you should be able to play around with it if you wanted to. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think it's just a really helpful tool for workflows and um, I hope it helps kind of visualize like how all this stuff fits together. I kind of like it too, cause you see like, you know, this test data isn't used at all, right? Until you want to look at, uh, make predictions, right? Using the features and actually look at the, the observed uh, outcomes and try to, you know, uh, you know, but all this training and stuff, you know, there's this whole path here where, you're making a recipe, a workflow, uh, fitting, and then then looking at the outcome. Um, so. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to discuss from this chapter or anything that was confusing? Uh, there's a couple things like I didn't go over. Um, like, so one thing I did is I, I just used the same recipe, but you can actually use different formulas or different recipes in general um, in a workflow set. And you can say, you know, I want these three different recipes for the three, three different models and it'll, um, you know, uh, you'll, you can fit uh, a bunch of the models using, um, you know, uh, using per uh, with map here. Um, 
Does the target also include the, I mean, I guess you could include any step you wanted, but the like uh, model assessment steps like confusion matrices or mm -hmm. RMSC and whatnot and like comparison, I guess the comparison stuff would mostly happen with the RMD file or whatnot. Yeah, uh, so, so I, I did that. Uh, so this is, uh, since this is a, a uh, like a, a continuous uh, outcome, like I didn't do a confusion matrix or anything, but um, I just did uh, here root mean squared error, R squared and mean absolute error. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Yeah, so so Ames metrics is just this, uh, um, you can do this metric set. Um, um, and so it's just this object that has, uh, you know, these different evaluation metrics and then, um, then I'm calling, so I'm, I'm mapping over all the models. So I'm just using the model names, which are uh, model names, uh, mapping over all the models. So I'm from the this prediction versus actual, uh, like this data frame that I've combined all the predictions with all the obs actual observations in the test set. Um, each time I'm just pulling out only the, the model that I'm looking at and the predictions of the model that I'm looking at and the sale price, and then saying the truth is the sale price and the estimate is the, whatever the model is we're looking at, and then just binding them all together and by model. Um, and so, yeah, so that that's the eval step here. That's what it's called here. And so if I read it in, you can see it's just a table with all the models here as rows and the metric and the actual estimate. And then I'm using that to plot the um, to plot them just to be able to see it uh, in a nicer way um, here, ggplot. So another question along that same vein is I can see how this would make it quite easy to ensemble, like just creating a mean with the predictions. Does the package have built-in methods for ensemble? Yeah, I would say that's probably what you want to like. That would be in the realm, I think, of tidy models. Um, I think there's like a stacks package and things like that that uh, build on tidy models that can do stuff the like models. that. Um, so, so yeah, I would think of targets okay. as more of a general yeah. kind of pipeline management tool, and then uh, you can kind of put whatever content you want in it. Um, so, um, but yeah, so that would be like a more specific thing to. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, the package, but. Um, and so is the, those tar target steps, are those all agnostic to what code goes in there? So you can theoretically add in whatever steps you want and this just kind of keeps track of it and models it and makes it very straightforward. Exactly, yeah. Um, so you can make any step like, uh, like whatever you want it to do. You can either write it as a function in line here. Like if I'm right here, I'm just like reading in this file. Um, but if I wanted to say like at the end, uh, I don't know, I want to write that, write the evaluations back into data, the data folder. So let's say this isn't like a target per se because it's I actually, I never, I don't know if I have the right way to do this, but um, if I just say uh, save data as a step, and then I want to write into a CSV in the data folder of this project, uh, the evaluation data frame. And so if I just ran it again, then you'll see uh, in the data folder, oh, oh, I didn't save it. Yeah. I guess another question would be, do you happen to know if it accommodates background tasks, like running R and background tasks, like non-blocking? Um, sorry, I didn't like that. Uh, oh, I, I, I know what I did wrong. I didn't put the actual, this is stupid. Uh, sorry, let me fix this and then. Um, okay, uh, what was your question? Does sure it, it accommodate um, non-blocking background modeling tasks? Like, cause I know you've mentioned that it, it does recording of like timing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I would wonder if it would accommodate that. I mean, I guess it probably would. It'd probably just start the background task, time it for however long it took the thing to execute and then 
the thing would finish, but the background task would still be running maybe. I don't know, because I tend to run a lot of modeling tasks in the background because they take a long time. I'm just wondering how that, if it fits with that. Yeah, um, I guess I'd have to know a little more about what you mean. Like, um, so I think I saw there's a question uh, that was asked on Twitter to Will Lando the other day that I think is related. Like someone was asking about background tasks and I mean, I don't know. Like, so like there are all these steps that are in a pipeline and then if some of them are taking longer than others, uh, in, right, as of, as of what I know right now about targets, like it'll just occupy the R session until until those are done. Um, so you either you, I think you would have to open up a new session if you want to do something else in that R session. Um, but I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Maybe there's a way around that. Um, um, I, I'll probably just test it and figure out if it's possible. My guess is like the R Studio API job run script that runs a background script. It'll probably just execute that and that'll run on its own and the targets will finish up um, the workflow as is, even though that's still running. But ideally that's what, I guess what you would want anyway. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you would. Yeah, uh, I, I haven't, I haven't done that, but um, yeah, yeah, you should try it out. Um, yeah, another cool thing uh, or new thing I think is like, if you, if you run this uh, tar make with like the cluster and it uses cluster MQ package, uh, there's a bunch of like backend cluster stuff that's already supported. But like, what I want to try as the next step is use this with like a Docker, a bunch of Docker containers, like a Kubernetes or something. And, and I think it should work uh, if, as long as it can connect to the cluster. Um, but, but the nice thing is like, you can, you can do this locally and run it like I did here on your local computer using the different cores, or you can like apply it in like, you know, across a bunch of computers in a cluster, um, but without really modifying the script. Um, just like saying which kind of cluster scheduler you're using, um, basically. Which I think is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Excited. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the things I didn't really talk about in this chapter, I think I got to a lot of it. Um, but uh, he talks about like, you know, uh, uh, there's different ways they get around like certain packages requiring formulas written in a certain way. So in this case, you, you, they just have a custom strata function here for the, for the model. Um, uh, I don't know, more technical stuff about how it's using formulas. Um, I just thought this was the neatest part of the chapter, these like workflow sets. Um, and let's see what else did I miss. Um, you use certain different functions to like pull out pieces of your workflow if you just want to look at the recipe, for instance. Um, um, yeah, but I feel like the other stuff. So basically, I was trying to like uh, represent something like this, but uh, in a pipeline, uh, targets pipeline, and so. They're just here making the point that uh, a model workflow is more than just the model estimation. It includes like the pre and post processing steps as well. Um, but... All right. Uh, anyone have anything they want to discuss here that was confusing or um, uh, I don't know anything anything else. I just want to say, uh, well, thank you for showing uh, this about targets, because I have done something similar but using Python. They have mm -hmm. something called a snake make, which it's the same concept. Oh, what? You... Sorry, I missed the name. What was the name? A snake make. Oh, make. Uh... A snake. No, a snake. Oh, make. snake. 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 Okay. Well, a snake make. <laughs> snake make. Okay. Yeah. Like, and uh, it's the same idea that you have steps, or they call it rules, and then you can uh, deploy the entire pipeline. And then it does the same thing that integrates with uh, a cluster or... Uh, and I saw these targets integrates with the cloud, which is really cool, because then you can do uh, like Tark, May, uh, Cloud, yeah. or something with Amazon, then... 
I guess the only limit there is how much you want to pay, how much you can pay <laughs> in terms of computational resources. Right. Um, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for uh, mentioning. I've never heard of Snake Make. I've heard of uh, Airflow, uh, like uh, Apache Air, or I think it's Apache Airflow that's similar. Um, um, I think you can actually use R in some way with this, but I think it's meant for Python. Um, uh, but yeah, that was, I think that was like one of the innovations with, with targets and I guess Drake was that it's specifically for R, which a lot of the uh, pipeline workflow management stuff um, isn't, is really designed up front for. Um, um, but yeah, I, I was hoping that he, they would have something. So it's, you're right that uh, they have this, uh, where is it, uh, cloud integration set up. Um, there is like the kind of a, uh, uh, it's set up out of the box, I guess, uh, if you want to put it that way for Amazon and like S3 buckets, which is really cool. Unfortunately at work, I use, we use Azure and uh, I want to, so I want to try it just like, I think that, so using cluster MQ, I think you can kind of do it yourself um, if you can connect to the cluster and kind of set it up. Um, but this package, I, I think, you know, has the ability to, accommodate like any kind of cluster that you can connect to and um, using SSH or something like that. Um, so I want to, I think, I think it's even though like other pla cloud platforms aren't directly built into it, I think, uh, I think you can, you can get it working potentially. I don't know. I need to, I need to read more about this stuff here, but like it supports all these different ways of scheduling uh, tasks. Um, so I hope he, he just makes it work for Azure in the near future. So I don't have to make, figure it out uh, myself, but, um, but yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, sure. Is there anything, anything else uh, to discuss during this chapter? I mean, I, I felt like there wasn't a lot to the actual, but there's just, you know, just a few things about workflows. Um, Anything else as like a follow-up from Luke's presentation that was on your mind? Uh, I know like I wasn't there, but that you wanted to bring up. Thanks, Kevin. The, um, I'm looking on the Google Sheets. We don't have someone for next week, I don't think, or the week after. So maybe that's worth <laughs> strong arming someone or something. I don't know. Yeah. Deciding what we do next. Let me. Uh, bring up the spreadsheet here. Uh, so this, so it's resampling. Uh, you can add me for that. I can do that. Yeah. I will. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Anyone want to take the week after? That would be uh, only, there will only be two spots open after that. Then we're done with the book, apparently. That's the last chapter, iterative search. Oh, there's we more now. The book, yeah, because of the book's being extended. Sorry, I, didn't, I missed that. Uh, no, I was just saying that we won't be done with the book because there's more chapters, which you've also clicked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are adding new chapters. Oh, but some of these aren't done yet, I see. So like screening many models, it looks like it's done now. Yep. Uh, so we, okay. So we'll keep going as the book <laughs> is, is made. Uh, I, I don't know if we'll, we'll get behind. It's like, uh, it'll be like Game of Thrones where we'll have to make up, uh, <laughs> we'll have to make up the next chapters for the, for the movie. <laughs> Uh, before they're finished. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, okay. All right. Uh, so we have someone for next week. We don't have someone for the week after. Does anyone want to take that now? I'll, I'll write it in. Uh, or uh, I'll do something. August. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, well, that's all I have. Does anyone have anything else before we end? All right.
right. Well, bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. This was awesome. See you next week. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Bye. Okay.